The Cube presents Dell Technologies World, brought to you by Dell. Hey everyone, welcome back to theCUBE's coverage. Day one, Dell Technologies World 2022, live from the Venetian in Las Vegas. Lisa Martin with Dave Vellante. We've been here for the last couple of hours. You can hear probably the buzz behind me. Lots of folks here. We're thinking around seven to 8,000 folks in the Solution Expo. The vibe is awesome. We've got two guests helping to round out our day one coverage. Ryan Fournier joins us, Senior Director of Product Management, Edge Solutions at Dell Technologies, and Munyem, Menhazadeen, Vice President of Edge Computing at VMware. Guys, welcome to the program. Oh, glad to be here. Yeah. Isn't it great to be in person? Oh man, yes. The vibe, the vibe of day one is awesome. Yes. Oh yeah, I no, think it's fantastic. Yeah. Like people gave energy off to each other, right? Absolutely. Yeah. So, lots of, some, some good news coming out today so far on day one. Let's, let's talk about, start, Ryan, I'll start with you. Yep. With Edge, it's not new, we've been talking about it for a while, but what are some of the things that are new? What are some of the key trends that you're seeing that are driving changes at the edge? Yeah, great, uh, good question. Uh, you know, we've been talking to a lot of customers, okay, a lot of customers in you know, the different verticals really find that we're, is a common theme happening around a massive digital transformation and really based on the pandemic, okay, which caused some acceleration in some, but also not, but many are kind of laggards left behind. And one primary reason is the, you know, the culture of the OT, IT, you know, lack of you know, barriers or something like that. Um, the OT is obviously the business outcomes, okay, focused, uh, where the IT is more enabling the function. Uh, and you'll take retail, for example. Uh, it, that's accelerated a significant uh, usage of an in-store, frictionless experience, okay? As well as supply chain, automation, um, warehousing, uh, logistics, connected inventory, a lot of the new use cases in this new normal post, uh, post that pandemic. It's really that new retail operating landscape. Consumers, we're so demanding. We want the same experience that we have online that we have, in, and we want that in the store, and, and that's really driving a lot of this out of consumer demand. Oh yeah, no, I think, um, you know, retail, you know, the way you shop for milk and bread changed during the pandemic, right? There was pre-pandemic, uh, the online shopping in the United States was only 5%. But during the pandemic and afterwards, that's kind of caught up to 25, 30%. That's huge. How do you bring new processes in? How do you create omni-channel consumer experiences where online as well as physical are blended together becomes a massive challenge for the retailers. So yes, Edge has been there for a long time. Innovation hasn't happened, but a simple credit card swipe when you used to pre-pandemic just to go do your checkout, now has become into a curbside pickup. Integration with, like it's just simple payment card processing is now complicated like, you know, crazy. So people are forced to go innovate and that's happening in manufacturing because there are supply chain issues, kid me not. So um, a lot of that has accelerated this investment and what's kind of driving edge computing is if everything ran out of the cloud, then you almost need infinite bandwidth. So suddenly people are realizing that everything runs out of cloud, I can't process my video analytics in a store, that's a lot of video, right? Yep. So we, we often ask ourselves, okay, who's going to win the edge? You know, we have that conversation. The cloud guys, VMware, you know, Dell, how are they going to go at it? And, and, and so, to your point, you're not going to do a round trip to the cloud, too expensive, too, too slow, now, cloud guys will try to bring their cloud basically on-prem or out to the edge. You're kind of bringing it from the data center. So how do you see that evolution? No, uh, great question. As the edge market happens, right? So there's market data now which says enterprise edge workloads in the next five years are going to be the fastest growing workloads. But then you have different communities coming to solve that problem. Like you just said, John, is you know, hyperscalers are going, hey, all of the new workloads were built on us. Let's bring them to the edge. Data center workloads move to the edge. Yep. Now, important community here are, you know, telcos and service providers, because they have assets that are highly distributed at the edge. However, they're networking assets, like cell towers and stuff like that. There's opportunity to convert them into compute and storage assets, so you can provide edge computing pops. So you're seeing a convergence of a lot of industry segments, Traditional IT, hyperscalers, telcos, and then 
OT, like Ryan pointed out, is naturally transforming itself. There's almost this confluence of this pot where all these different technologies need to come together. From VMware and Dell perspective, our mission is a multi-cloud edge. We want to be able to support multi-cloud services because you've heard this multiple times, is at the edge, consumers and customers will require services from all the hyperscalers. Mm -hmm. They don't want to buy a one hyperscaler soup to not solution. They want to mix and match. So not bound, we want to be multi-cloud. Southbound support IT and OT yep. environments. So that becomes our value proposition in the middle. Yep. So Ryan, you were talking about that ITOT schism and we talk about that a lot. I, I wonder if you could help us parse that a little bit because you, you were using, for instance, retail as an example. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I think about in the industrial yep. and I think the OT people are kind of like have an engineering mindset. Don't touch my stuff. Yep. Kind of like the IT guys too, but different. You know? <laughs> so uh, there's so much opportunity at the edge. Uh, I wonder how you guys think about that, how you segment it, how you prioritize it. Obviously retail, telco are big enough yep. that you can get your hands around them. But then there's, to your point about all this data that's going to compute, it's going to come in pockets, and I wonder how you guys think about that schism and the other opportunity yeah. out there. So, so great question. Um, you know, in manufacturing, okay, there's the true OT persona, yeah. okay, and that really is focused on the business outcomes, things like predictive maintenance use cases, uh, operational equipment effectiveness, uh, like that's really around bottleneck analysis and the process that go through that. Uh, if the plant goes down, they're fine. Okay, they can still work on their own systems, but they're not needing that high availability solution. But they're also the decision makers and where to buy the edge computing. Okay, so we need to talk more to the OT persona from a Dell perspective. Okay. And, and you know, add on to Ryan, right? So industrial is an interesting challenge, right? Um, so one of the things we did, uh, and this is VMware Dell working together, at VMworld, it was virtual, we announced something called edge compute stack. Mm -hmm. And for the first time in 23 years of VMware history, we made the hypervisor layer real time. Yep. What that means is in order to capture some of these OT workloads, yep. you need to get in and operate it between the industrial PC yep. and the programmable logical controllers at a sub millisecond performance level yep. because now you're controlling robotic arms that you cannot miss a beat. Yep. So we actually created this real time functionality yep. With that functionality, in the last six months, we've been able to virtualize PLCs, IPCs. Um, so what I'm getting at is we're opening up an entire white space of operational technology workloads, which we, was not accessible to our market for the last 20 plus years. Yeah. Now we're talking. Yeah. Yeah. And that allows us, that, that control plane infrastructure, the edge compute that's purpose built for edge, allows us to pivot and do other solutions like analytics with the adoption of AI analytics with our recent announcement of Deep North. Okay, that provides that in-store um, video analytics functionality. Uh, and then we also um, partner with PTC based on a manufacturing solution, working with that same edge compute stack. Think of that as that control plane, where again, like I said, you can pivot off of different solutions. Okay, so we leverage PTC's ThingWorks. So, okay, right, so I, I wanted to go to that. So real time's really interesting. Yeah. Because most of, much of AI today is, is modeling done in the cloud. Yes. The real opportunity is real-time inferencing at the edge. Got it. Okay, now, this is why this gets so interesting and I wonder if Project Monterey fits into this at all. Absolutely does. Because I feel like, so why did Intel win? Intel won, it crushed all the Unix systems out there because it had PC volumes. Mm -hmm. And the edge volume is going to dwarf anything we've ever seen before. Yeah. So I feel like there's this new cocktail, you guys describe this convergence and this mixture. Mm -hmm. And it's unknown what's going to happen. That's why Project Monterey is so interesting. Of course, yeah. Right, because yeah. you're bringing together, kind of hedging a lot of bets and, and, and serving a lot of different use cases. Maybe you could talk about where that might fit here. Oh, absolutely. So the edge compute stack is made up of vSphere, Tanzu, yep. which is vSphere's are, you know, VM container, and, and Tanzu's are container technology, and vSphere contains Monterey in it. Right, um, and we've added vSAN for storage at the edge, and connectivity is SD-WAN, because a lot of the times it's far location, so you're not having a large footprint, you have one or two hosts, it's more wide area network. So, 
The edge compute stack supports real-time, non-real-time workloads. VMs and containers. CPU, GPU. <laughs> Yeah. Right? Um, NPU. NPU, N DPU. Accelerators. Yeah, and, and the DPUs, yep. all of them, right? Because what you're dealing with here is that inferencing real time, because to Ryan's yep. point, when you're doing predictive maintenance, you got to pick these signals up in like milliseconds. Yes. So we've got our stack down to microseconds, and we pick up and inform, because if I can save this predictive maintenance in two seconds, I save millions of dollars in you know wastage of product, right? And you may uh, not even persist that data. Right, you might just let it go. Absolutely. I mean, I don't, I'm, how so, much data does, does Tesla save, right? I mean, You're absolutely right. A lot of the times, all you're doing is this volume of data coming at you, you're matching it to an inferencing pattern. If it doesn't match, you just drop, right? It's not persistent, but the moment you hit a trigger, immediately everything lights go off. You're logging, you're applying outcomes, so it's like super interesting at the edge. And the compute is going to go through the roof. So. Yeah, my, my premise is that you know, general purpose x86 running SAP is not going to be the architecture for the edge. You're it's absolutely gonna, right. It's going to be low cost, low power, super performance, because when you combine the CPU, GPU, NPU, you're going to blow away the performance that we've ever seen on the curves. There's also a new application pattern. I've called out something called edge native applications. You know, we went through this client server architecture era, we built all this, you know, a very clear in architecture. We went through cloud native, where everything was hyperscale in the compute in the in the in the cloud. Both of the times we optimize our own compute. Yeah. At the edge, we got to optimize our own data because it's not ephemeral compute that you have in hyperscale compute space, you have ephemeral data you got to deal with. So a new nature of application workloads are emerging, we call it edge native apps. Yep. And those have very different characteristics you know, to client server apps or you know, a cloud native apps, which is amazing. It's driven by data analysts like developers, not like .NET Java developers. It's actually data analysts who are trying to mine this with fast pat patterns and come out with outcomes, right? Yeah. I love that. Edge native apps, Lisa, that's a new term for me. All right, just trade, trademark it on me, I made, <laughs> made it up. You heard it here first. Can you guys talk about a joint customer that you've really helped to dramatically transform in the last six months? Uh, I, you want to shout, I can go? Even okay. my industry is fine. Yeah, yeah, uh, so you know, at, at VMware we talked about Oshkosh, which is again, like a, in the manufacturing space, we have retailers and manufacturers, and you know, we also brought in, you know, um, Procter & Gamble, and et cetera, et cetera, right? Um, so the customers look at us jointly, yeah. because, um, you know, this does, edge doesn't happen in its own silo. It's a continuum from the data center to the cloud to the edge, right? There, the continuum exists, so if, only Edge was in its own silo, you would do things. But the key thing about all of this, there's no right place. It's about that workload placement. Yes. Where do I place the workload for the most optimal business outcome? Now, for real-time applications, it's at the edge. Mm -hmm. For non-real-time stuff, it could be in the data center. It could be in a cloud. It doesn't really matter. Where VMware and Dell Strengths comes in with Oshkosh or all of those folks is we have the end-to-end -end from you want to place it in the data center, you want to place it in your choice of public cloud, you want to derive some of these applications, you want to place it at the far edge, which is a customer prem, or a near edge, which is a telco. We've done joint announcements yep. with telcos like South yep. Carolina Telecom, where we've taken their cell towers and converted them into compute and storage, so they can actually store it at the near edge, yep. right? So this is 5G solutions. I also own the 5G part of the VMware business, um, but doesn't matter. Yep. Compute network storage, we got to find the right mix for placing the workload at the right place. You call that the okay. near edge. Yeah. The, the, I think of it as the far edge, but that's what you mean, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 Way out there. Way out there. In the hinterland, right, okay. Yeah. It's all about just optimizing operations, reducing costs, increasing profitability for the customer. So you said edge, not its own silo, and I, and I agree. It's not a silo, no. Is mobile um, a, a valid sort of example or a little test case because when we develop mobile apps, it drove a lot of things in the data center and in the cloud. Yeah. Is that a, a, a way to think about it? Or, as opposed to like, PCs work kind of their own silo. Yeah, we connect yeah. to the internet, but uh, is mobile a reasonable proxy or, or no? Mobile is an interesting proxy. Uh, when you think about the application, again, you know, you got a platform. By the way, you get excited by this. We've got 
mobile developers, mobile device manufacturers, you can count them on your fingers, yeah. they want to now have these devices sitting in factory floors. Yeah. Because now these devices are so smart, they have sensors, temperature controls, they can act like these yeah. multi-sensory device at the edge. Uh, but the app landscape is quite interesting. I think, John, where you were going was, they have a very thin shim app layer that can be pushed from anywhere. The, the notion of these edge native applications could be virtual machines, could be containers, could be um, you know, this new thing called web uh, assembly, WASM, which is yeah. a new type of technology, very thin shim layer, which is mobile-like app layer. But you know, all of these are a you know, combination of how these applications may get expressed. The target platforms could be anywhere from mobile devices to IoT gateways, to IoT devices, to servers, yep. to you know, massive you know, data centers. So, uh, what's amazing is this thing can just go everywhere, and our goal is consistent infrastructure, consistent operations yeah. across the board. Uh, that's where VMware and Dell win yeah. together. Yeah. And I was just talking to a customer today, uh, a major airline manufacturer, okay, uh, about the airport of the future with the mobile device just being frictionless. Okay, no one wants to touch anything anymore. You can do, use your mobile device to do your check-in, and you, I mean, you've, you've got to, you, you avoid kiosks, okay? So they're trying to figure out how to get rid of the kiosk. Now you need a kiosk for like checking baggage, okay? You can't get away with that, but at least that frictionless experience, okay, for that airport of the future. But it brings in some other issues. <laughs> it does, but I like, I like the sound of that. Last question, guys, where can customers go to learn more information about the joint solutions? So you can go to like our public websites, obviously search on Edge, uh, and if you're here at the show, uh, there's a lot of, there's uh, hands-on labs, okay, there's a booth over there, uh, a lot of Edge solutions, okay, that we offer. Yeah. No, this is, uh, yes, as Ryan pointed out, our, our websites have this, we've had a lot of partnership announcements together, yep. Yep. because you know, one of the things as we've expressed, manufacturing, retail, you know, when you get in the use cases, they involve the ISVs, yes, right? So they, 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 you know, they bring the value of, you know, not, not just having a, a horizontal AI platform. We like opinionated models of fraud detection. So we're actually working with, you know, ecosystem of partners to yep. make this real. So we may even they, hear they more They enrich the, the vertical solution, I call it. Yeah. The so ISVs, they enrich our vertical solutions. Right. Oh, VMware's going to be revolutionary. Yeah. All right, <laughs> can't wait. Guys, thank yeah. you so much for joining Dave and me you. today and talking about what Dell and VMware are doing together and helping retailers, manufacturers really convert the edge to incredible success. We Great. appreciate your time. Thank you very much. Thanks, Lisa. Thanks, Sean, for having us. For Dave Vellante, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching theCUBE. We're wrapping up day one of our coverage of Dell Technologies World 2022. We'll be back tomorrow. John Furrier and Dave Nicholson join us. We'll see you then.